Welcome to the Crack in the Growth Code podcast, where we explore practical growth and leadership insights to take you and your organization to the next level. Today, I am pleased to have as my guest, Mike Rose. Mike, thanks for being here. Uh, it's great to be here. I appreciate you, Matt. I'm, I'm really excited to get into it, Mike, with your uh, with your background, with your experience about, about Agile and, and leadership and everything you've done. Um, not only in the military, but in the in the corporate world, there's just so many lessons. A lot of people I work with in the agile space have uh, come from military or have military in their family as well, and it's I, I find it fascinating always to um, get the leadership insights and the growth and the mindset that comes out of the military uh, mindset and how that applies to the corporate world. So to kick it off, um, can you introduce your company and your role to our listeners and let them know a little bit about who you are? what you're up to, what you're most passionate about right now? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, so primarily, I'm with a company called Amentum. Uh, we work in a lot of government contracting space uh, as an agile coach, consultant, um, on all, all tiers, from the enterprise level, the technical side, and the team side as well. Uh, realistically, that's that's my it, it's that stems from, we'll talk more about it, I'm sure, but I mean, I've been coaching soccer for 15, 16 years, and I took a lot of the same principles from the field, brought them into the office environment and by golly, it worked out really well. So I've been there for about five years now and I do some side things. I teach and train, do a lot of curriculum development to help, you know, younger folks, I say not age wise, but more experience wise in the game, just get better. That's fantastic. I love that. Cause that's a mindset. Clearly you have it. And as a leader, you want to instill that on your teams and individuals who you're working with. And I, it's mm -hmm. fantastic. You got a lot of soccer. We have a lot of soccer in, in our family as well. And um, there's so much there's so much to team sports that relate to the team sports in the corporate world, right? Yes, indeed. Um, and and I'm curious, and and uh and, and you're a parent as well, so that's another team sport, right? Where you're where you're, <laughs> yeah. where you're developing and bringing out the best in your kids and in your family mm -hmm. and and uh and all that. And, and these are things that as parents and, and leaders we, we think about all the time. Um, what, what's something that you, uh, found from your experience, maybe something that came from maybe soccer or the military or the corporate world, what's something that you think as, um, uh, that you've, you've seen as very helpful and effective as you're developing a team and you're leading uh, a team or an organization, what's, what's a, a leadership, uh, uh, attribute, uh, that you have, that you value highly and that you um, you help instill into the team to really bring out the best in what they can do. So the first thing that comes to mind is authenticity. Uh, just being able to let folks know that, uh, you know, being the real person, being a real person, being somebody who is not put on that face, that facade, uh, you know, is, is the right thing to do. Uh, you know, I mean, I you know, from coaching on the field and talking about, dealing with different personalities, especially in the youth game when folks are trying to figure it out, uh, going into the adult side of the house when everybody's a lot more rigid and we learned a certain way to do things. And, 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 you know, then, you know, that whole shut up in color or the whole, Hey, you know, um, they got a million different analogies, but realistically, you know, uh, fake the funk, right. We don't do any of that because people can see right through that. And, uh, you know, I, I I've noticed, I've saw, I've, I've been around some scrum masters who, thought they knew what they did they threw themselves into the water head first and they weren't ready and mm -hmm. uh and it, it was a shame it was a shame and and i told them i said don't fake the funk if you don't know well, come see me you got a lifeline right don't be that that guy or gal that just says uh i'll just fake it till i make it no that's yeah. not the right mindset yeah and it's tough in the corporate world because if you are trying to fake it <clears throat> and you're struggling and your team doesn't see you as a leader or as a as a talented scrum master to really help just organize them and, and serve them, you know, that can, that can go wrong really fast. So it's, it's great that you're there as a, a coach, leader, mentor, uh, to help those, to help those folks. But from an authenticity point of view, I find it, um, it, it's a great word. It makes me think about transparency, makes me think about self-awareness. How do you help your, uh, individuals, teams, et cetera, whether it's soccer team or corporate team or, um, how do you help people develop self-awareness? Because that's a really, if they're not self-aware, it's tough to be authentic, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, do you, do you, how do you do that? Whether it's in the soccer or the corporate world or or military, what, what are some things that you do? 
So one of the things that I've been pushing to a lot of folks lately is um, to have that quiet time, right? To get yourself in a room by yourself, looking, even looking in a mirror, right? And just being able to self-reflect and understand maybe how the day went, how, what the, you know, what, what the day is going to be like something, but no distractions because that's when in silence, especially because that's when, even though it's awkward and people don't like that awkward silence, realistically, that's when a lot of truth comes to light. Uh, and that's when you can actually think about, wow, well, I said that yesterday. I probably shouldn't have said that. Or, you know what? I, I did this. I, I took an action and it was definitely the wrong action. Why was it the wrong action? Right. Uh, there's another thing that comes to light when you self reflect is subconscious bias, right? We all have bias as human beings. And if we're not willing to, uh, identify it, then we, then we're stuck because you know, no, no one can tell me that they're, they don't have bias, you know, in, in them. They just have to identify it first. And then if you're cognizant of it, you can work around it. I teach classes on critical thinking and decision making. And that's one of the number one things is, is that self-awareness and that subconscious bias. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's gotten a lot more. Um, it's been a lot more in the conversation now that uh, subconscious bias and and to make it conscious, as you're saying, helps mm -hmm. you create self-awareness. And I like how you said going into the quiet, even though it's uncomfortable, whether it's meditation or I sometimes I just say you just got to sit out under a tree, right? Mm -hmm. just sit out under a tree alone and just, you know, just let let your thoughts, let your thoughts flow. And, so, and like you say, reflect on on. Um, on what yesterday was, what last week was, what the last sprint was, what what it, what it may be. That's mm -hmm. where I find that um, healthy teams, and I'd like to get your, um, love to hear your perspective on this, but healthy teams in a retrospective will really open up and really have that raw, real conversation with each other and say, hey, how do we get better as a team? How do we support each other, bring out the best in each other, but also bring out the best in a team? Have you? Um, have you um, have you seen effective retrospectives with some of your your squads, or have you have you helped uh, coach some of your uh, your scrum masters or other leaders into uh, holding more effective retrospectives to help support their teams? Yeah, uh, th that's that's always a point, not a contention. But the thing is, is it all comes down to trust. It all comes down to trust and cohesiveness inside that team. And so, uh, the the retrospective is one of the things that I love I, 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 of all the ceremonies that's the number one that I like to observe because that's when you see the real issues right uh, you know if, if I can have an honest conversation with the teammate dude that's great right but if, if it's if it lasts five minutes and nobody talks right or hey yeah we did a good job uh, well, it was something we can work on uh, well Maybe, I don't know. And, th and that's it, right? I've seen that. And that's because of the fact there isn't trust in the room. And, and you know, I threw out some things where there was one gentleman, he was a product owner, he was a good guy, but he always liked to have the last word. But in a retrospective, that's not necessarily the best place for a PO to be able to talk the whole time. So what I did was I politely asked him because that, that mean the, the, the retros were, were a waste of time. They were, they were not doing what they needed to do. I asked him to be out of the next two retrospectives. I said, just do me a favor. Say you had meetings come up, say you couldn't be there. At first he kind of questioned it and then he did it. And those next two retros lasted time boxed at an hour, but they could have went longer. Wow. And they were they were very technical in nature. They were talking about the different intricacies of the process and how they can improve. And it was really, really cool. And I'm just like, so I'm like, thank you, God, that I said the right answer, right? So it worked out well. That's fantastic. I've seen that in my experience too, Mike, where um, if you don't have the right uh, trust or vibe between the product owner and the team members, there can be this uh, contention, and then that just doesn't allow the safe space for people to really open up. And um, I, I've I've had a similar experience where the product owner stayed away for a few sprints, and then and then they had the team had fantastic retrospectives. They really started to open up, and then when the product owner came back, um, as a coach, I almost had to like reacclimate them to the new environment because yep. it wasn't about them and their um, anxiety about release cadence or whatever. It was more about, Hey, how do we support the team? How do we all serve the team? Even you as the product owner, how do you serve the team and give them what they need? Um, so they can best deliver. 
right? Like, let's mm-hmm. put the power in their hands. So that's yep. that's that's exciting stuff. I want to talk with you a little bit about um another another passion I have is really on just helping great passionate um, individuals just connect to the great opportunities for jobs, whether it's a promotion within a company or whether it's going from one company to another company. I've done a lot of career coaching and a lot of um, guidance and so forth for uh, for people in their careers, especially agile careers. And I'm just curious, um, and I've been asking a lot of leaders the uh, the question, when you're hiring, when you're hiring, um, what are some of the key things that you look for uh, you're hiring for somebody on an agile team? Could be a scrum master, could be a product owner, could be a senior agile leader, another agile coach. What are some of the things that you look for um, in the individual um, to really help you assess like cultural fit? Some of the the harder things that you can't see on the resume. What are some of the maybe some questions you ask or some of the things that you look for when you want to bring someone on to your team or one of your teams in your organization? I think that first things come to mind and I have a third. So willingness and drive are the number two, one and two. Like I think they they go synonymous, right? They are both very, very top tier things that I look for when, uh, well, as a hiring manager, looking to bring somebody on. Uh, the third is don't mean to say, but agile, right? Like, yeah. you know, I, I like throwing scenarios out at my guys and, and gals that interview because of the fact that I love how they're going to think, how quick they're going to think on their feet, right? That sort of thing. So I just, it, it, it makes me happy to see, and I've had some great answers, some actually things that people in in an in in interview that actually taught me a thing or two, which was really good. So that's cool. That's cool. I'd imagine you, you probably interviewed and, um, and hired probably many dozens or many hundreds of people over the years, I'm guessing you've probably been involved in a lot of interviews uh, from your experience. So you've seen the, um, you've probably seen the more shy or introverted candidates who have a lot of potential, a lot of willingness, a lot of drive, but they don't know how to express it. And then you need to ask questions differently to sort of evoke that, to see if they're going to fit in well um, when they come in. And the opposites, the people who are overconfident, but really sort of lack the real, uh, the real content. So, <clears throat> so that's good. I want to want to ask you about related to um, related to that. When when you have a, a team, what are what are some of the what are some of the um, <clears throat> I guess what are some of the key challenges that you see in really bringing out the best in your teams and in your leaders today? What are some of the things that you see um, some of these leaders and individuals really uh, struggling with? Uh, I mean, the culture shift, right? I don't mean to say, you know, the buzzwords and stuff, but the culture shift, so many adults these days, right? We think we know a lot, right? And, and we are inherently selfish. That's what human beings are. So when you come to somebody and say, Hey, listen, we're going to, Hey, you know, let's, let's see if we can do it A, B, C, D. And they're like, well, we've done it this way. I'm like, oh, hold up. Like, I got you, but has it worked for you? Well, it has, but what about a, what about a situation where it hasn't worked? And then they start asking. It's more facilitation than anything else because I can't tell them to go a certain type of way. But from a facilitation techniques, you lead them in a way where they're like, well, I did have that scenario where, yeah. And then I did. And then, mm, uh, mm, yeah, maybe maybe I do need a little bit of, you know, more, more, more reflecting and figure out how I can do things a bit better, right? So again, you know, that's another class that I've taught and I've, I've been a part of for a long time is a facilitation techniques. And as a leader, it is something, a critical skill that a lot of leaders and managers are, are, are missing the mark on. Yeah, facilitation is so important. I've seen some people who, without any agile experience, um, and uh, but very passionate about people, a lot of willingness, a lot of drive, and um, but they have great facilitation skills. I know one individual who was no agile experience, but he wanted to get into the agile uh, space and with, within companies and things like that. And he was uh, a master facilitator. He trained uh, customer service uh, representatives in, in his company. And he knew how to do the training. He knew how to facilitate. He even came in um, as a non agilist which was pretty cool, and facilitated a group of agile coaches that we had at a summit. And he facilitated a whole session on facilitation skills and techniques. And and I was like, wow, <clears throat> that's pretty amazing. Somebody walking into, I mean, that's a pretty intimidating crowd. If you got a whole group of agile coaches and 
you know, we're always doing facilitation and coaching. And you have someone without any agile experience coming in to teach us about facilitation. And it was absolutely amazing um, <clears throat> how powerful that one skill um, was in developing um, his ability to provide value to us as coaches, but also in his career. I talked with him afterwards. I said, where do you want to go? And long story short, he wanted to get into the agile space. And he became a very successful scrum master and then a coach. And he's uh, he's done some work in uh, some of the, the larger uh, uh, scrum consulting organizations now. So he's he's uh, been on that path, but it started with facilitation, as uh, as as you talked about. <clears throat> I want to just ask um, one more question as we sort of wind it down here. Mm -hmm. What are some from from your experience, sports, corporate, military, whatever it is? What are what are the three key takeaways? Three three tips that you have for leaders who want to really bring out their best uh, in the workplace? What are three tips that you have for leaders to share? Coming back around to what I originally said was authenticity. I think that's number one. I think being real with your people, right? Being with, whether you're in uniform or not, or on the sports field or as a coach, you know, be real with them because they go through issues. We are people, we go through things. And if they know that you are willing to be empathetic, that where you're willing to understand where they're coming from, uh, they, they think, they you think they matter right and 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 they want to work harder for you right it's a, that old saying like treat people it's not treat people the way you want to be treated it's treat people the way they want to be treated mm -hmm. and by you being authentic it allows you to be more empathetic and understanding towards them it's a it's a it's a vicious cycle in a good way right that's number one uh number two i think that lee it's kind of on the same line is being self-aware being able to go in that quiet space and being able to be organized and be able to assess how you were yesterday, what you plan on doing today, because realistically as a leader, uh, you need to do it. You need, you, you, you need to be self-aware all the time on everything you do. And remember social media, uh, uh, text messages, uh, emails, you can't take those back. <laughs> right. I mean, you could take words back maybe, but not really. Right. But the other ones they're, they're on, they're on paper. They're there forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the last thing I would probably say is, um, just, I had one and it was good, but then my mind went blank. So I'll probably go time. with, yeah, I'll probably go with be willing to learn more. Never stop learning. I think that's a, that's another one. That's that's my third and final. As a you can never a leadership is one of those things you can never be a the best leader, <laughs> right? There's always room for improvement. And uh, you know, I was just talking to a guy yesterday. We were at a Christmas party. We had like four this week. Uh, but he he uh, <laughs> he was telling me. He's like, yeah, he's like, I just haven't got a chance to read. You gave me that book and it, it seems really good. And I haven't got a chance to read it. And I said, listen, I said, you're doing a disservice to yourself. I said, if you can't read, get, get, or can't read it, you know, you ain't got the time, get, get audible. Right. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, you know, you, you, there's no excuse to be able to, I mean, I just started reading probably five, six years ago and I'm 41. And I just said, you know what? Uh, it's time. And I'll tell you right now, the first book I read, it was tough for me to get through, but it was awesome. And then I do a combination of reading and audible. And a lot of times now for people that like me who, you know, if there was like an ADHD thing back in the day, I probably would be it. I, what helps me is I do, I do audible and I get the book at the same time. So there'll be times where I'll listen and I'll also be following along and it helps me absorb things a lot more than I would have previously. I love that, Mike. Those are such great tips. I've done that as well. I'm a huge audible fan from when they launched back in the, 1998, 1999, whatever it mm -hmm. was. I've been, a, I've been a customer since back in the day. And I do the same thing. If I really want to get into a book, uh, I'll buy the book and I'll listen to it on audio. And then it, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do both at the same time. Like you're saying, follow along. That way you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're experiencing it, you're processing it, um, and you go through it. And sometimes I even go through books back to back. Like I'll listen to it on Audible. And I'll say, that was so good. I want to I want to listen to it again. Yeah. And just so that you can start to apply the techniques and so forth. So I love that. The never mm -hmm. stop learning. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And, and the, the tips you shared, you know, the, the, the be real, empathetic, and, you know, be self-aware. 
and then never stop learning out there. And your examples, you, you answered my last question I was going to ask you, which is like, how do you apply the never stop learning? And you you answered it, which was great. And you shared with one of your friends how uh, how that can help them too. And I see it with our family, with our kids who are in their teenagers, teenage years. They're not excited about reading from school, but then we get them. They eventually find their way to get excited about reading and listening from uh, audio, video, audible books and things like that. And they start to get into it. Then they start to unlock, well, this is cool. There's so much I can learn and I can apply this to my life and my perspective. Mm -hmm. And it works out really well. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you so much, Mike, for your time, for your energy, for all your insights. I think it's uh, fantastic. I know our listeners and our, our future leaders and current leaders who listen to this podcast, I know they're going to get a lot of value from uh, from your perspective. And and I'll I'll share um, best way for people to contact you uh, through LinkedIn or are there other other ways, email or what do you prefer? Yeah, yeah probably LinkedIn is the best. I check it pretty frequently. I mean, obviously, I, I try not to be too attached to my phone, uh, yeah. but it is what it is. So yeah, I, yeah, they can hit me up on LinkedIn. It's fine. Appreciate you. All right, cool. So we'll use LinkedIn as the best way to uh, communicate with you. Well, thank you very much, Mike, for your time and your energy. I hope you have a great, great time and, you know, happy holidays. Hey, you, you too. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Thank you.